Cross Cogger, Coach of the Year. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Uh, obviously, uh, a great rec recognition for, for the year that the club's had. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm coach, but I'm more of a leader of a staff of people that have worked really hard all year. And I guess, uh, like I said, it's great recognition for all the hard work everyone's put in. There's a time for humility and there's a time for honesty. Now uh, is the time. You were the guy that uh, came in with, uh, with a vision, with a blueprint for the club that hasn't really been seen in the A-League before. Uh, it, was, uh, it was your ship and you were the captain. Yeah, look, there's no doubt that, you know, I had, I did have a, a pretty clear blueprint in my head about what I wanted to do and uh, about to make some tough decisions last year. And uh, But, I, you know, at the same time, I, you know, I just thought it was a process we needed to go through to be successful. Brisbane, you know, hadn't won anything in the, in the first five years and hadn't played in the grand final. And, you know, I just I had, a, you know, I had a gut feeling, not a gut feeling, I you know, had a clear idea that we could be successful doing things a certain way and uh, everyone's bought into it. I mean, the staff, the players, and you need that, you know, you, it can't be just me making decisions. I think you, everyone has to believe in it and, and buy into it and uh, certainly the whole club has. Quite often uh, in football clubs, though, you don't get that time to, to implement what you want to do. You copped a lot of grief last year when the senior players, the likes of Craig and Charlie, uh, were moved on. Was there a time you thought, you know, hang on, I'm not going to be given the chance to, to see through what I want to see through? Yeah, no, you can't think that way. And I, I mean, a lot of people have spoken about that. But, you know, from my mind, if I had doubts about what I was doing, I wouldn't have started the process. You don't make tough decisions like we did. If you if you got any doubts about it, you know, it wasn't to make a point. It was That's the way I wanted to go. And I said to the club, you know, give me 12 months and then you can judge what I've done then. And, and the club backed me in that. And uh, whilst, you know, there was obviously some angst and, and, and anxiety around the place when those decisions were made, in my mind, it was just part of the process. And, uh, you know, I was really confident that we'd get through it. A lot of people are now saying that you're at the vanguard of, uh, of the new level of, uh, of coaching in Australia, of, of educated coaches who've come in with a clear philosophy, perhaps ideas picked up from overseas you've been able to, to implement here. Does that make you proud to, to be considered to be at the vanguard of a, of a new wave? Yeah, look, I, I mean, I'm not sure about the vanguard, but certainly, you know, I was in a pretty, pretty privileged position as national youth team coach for seven years, you know. I travelled the world and I was able to, to, to almost get an education in terms of a footballing side of things and uh, and put it in place now and I think you're seeing that with Graham Arnold and, you know, I think that the level of coaching is increasing every year and I think that's been reflected with the level of play and and the good thing about it is we're all competitive so, you know, I'm sure people will come in and challenge what we've done next year and, and for us, if we stand still as a club and, and me as a coach, then we'll get surpassed as well. So it just never stops. I think that that sort of thing keeps going. And, uh, you know, I think it's great to see. I think th that's the one unequivocal thing that people are saying, that the standard in general has improved this year. And I think that's, that's, that's fantastic for the game of football. I mean, that's what we want. There's two main gongs, or one of them you've already got locked away, qualification for a massive tournament that is the Asian Champions League next season. The second one, of course, is the grand final. Coming up on Sunday, uh, you're in the situation where you've had a week off. Uh, and it's your job now to, to keep the players fresh and, uh, and prepared and, and on edge for that. So how do you do that with, uh, with the drop back, not having a, a competitive match? Yeah, no, I, th I think you know, the fact that it is a home final and, and we kind of probably needed the two weeks just to prepare for it and build up to it because uh, there's obviously a lot of commitments for the players and you know, there's a lot of a lot of hype around the place and I think that's a good thing but you know we kind of hopefully got rid of most of our stuff last week and in the final week we can just concentrate on our, our training and preparing for the game so you know I think it's a good two week lead in um, you know I've got a bit of experience in, in terms of grand finals and uh, you know I've said to the boys you've got to enjoy it you can't resist it you know um, you've got to enjoy the whole experience it doesn't come around too often and uh, I'm really confident that you know, with a good week of training, I'm sure we'll have this week that the players will be ready, and then you know it's it's all about game day. It's been a couple of uh, cracking clashes between uh, yourselves and the Mariners this year. The the one the, the most recent one, of course, that semi final where they came up and really turned on a show, showed perhaps that they're not uh, as fearful as other sides have been uh, going up to Suncorp. What lessons did you guys take out of that match? I don't think we, we, we took out any lessons. I think, you know, they challenged us and, and we expected them to. I think, you know, for us, it was a little bit of a weird situation with the 2-0 two, two lead from the first leg. I think probably for the first time this year, we, we went a little bit defensive and, um, you know, didn't take as many risks as we have been all year, thinking that, you know, holding on to that 2-0. And uh, it kind of shook us a little bit. I think it was more our approach. And uh, in the second half, we got back to our normal self. But we're expecting a tough game. Central Coast, I think, have been the other outstanding side of the season. I think the latter reflects that and uh, it'll be the two best teams. So, but we're confident in ourselves. I mean, you don't go 27 games unbeaten unless you know you're doing something right, and that's that's the message I keep reinforcing to the players. You know, just keep doing what we're doing and, and have a positive approach, and uh, the rest will take care of itself. Thanks, Andrew. Good luck on Sunday. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, mate.